Joining us now, Republican David Vitter from Louisiana and Democratic Senator Bill Nelson, who both voted to approve the funding. Let's go to Senator Nelson first. Welcome, sir. Great to have you here today. Hi, Uma. Before I get to the issue of funding the Syrian fighters, I would like to ask you for your reaction to former Defense Secretary Leon Panetta's comments in that upcoming 60 Minutes interview saying, we left Iraq too soon and ISIS flourished because the U.S. got involved in Syria too late. What's your response? I agree with Leon. Does this uh, interview or these remarks cast doubt on the administration's efforts to go after ISIS at this point? <clears throat> uh, not at all. As a matter of fact, uh, as I heard the clip in my earpiece, uh, Leon was talking about leaving Iraq. Uh, but of course, the uh, Maliki government had forced us uh, because they would not sign an agreement that would hold harmless our uh, soldiers. And so, the president was not going to put us in that position of having soldiers liable to an Iraqi government. With regard to Syria, however, I think the president has been prudent. He has been cautious because we didn't know who we were dealing with. They have now, over the last couple of years, sufficiently vetted these folks, and they will continue to vet them before they take them to Saudi Arabia uh, to start training them. Well, let me ask you about this because lots of questions remain on whether training and arming the moderate members of the Free Syrian Army will really help defeat ISIS. Many of your Democratic colleagues have issued misgivings as well. People still want to know who's actually going to do the vetting to make sure that these guys can be trusted. Well, it's a legitimate question, but, uh, you know, we got to try. Look, what is the alternative to let uh, ISIS continue to behead um, Americans? Uh, I don't think we're uh, planning to do that, and I don't, don't think we're planning to let them, as they say, they won't stop until the black flag of ISIS is flying over the White House. So it's time for us to go after them. I want them to go ahead and start the airstrikes, and I think that the president has the constitutional uh, uh, authority as commander-in-chief to do that. You know, we're now hearing from the director of national intelligence that the U.S. has underestimated the Islamic State. And in his words, he says, what we didn't do was predict the will to fight and overestimated the capability of the Iraqi army. That should worry a lot of folks, should it not, Senator? Because those uh, Iraqi soldiers have been at the side of U.S. soldiers for many years with many of them trained by our guys when ISIS rolled through Mosul, for example, most of those Iraqis just dropped their weapons and ran. What makes you think that training Syrians for the next several months in Saudi Arabia will do a better job? Uh, this is all about sectarian split between Sunnis and Shiites. And the problem was that the Maliki government was just all one sectarian and they used it as political patronage in their appointment of generals in the army. Uh, you can't have a fighting force like that. Now, with this new uh, prime minister in, I think uh, we've got a chance of seeing them be more inclusive and therefore having the professionalism in the army in Iraq that is needed. You get into Syria, it's another whole and very complicated deal but we've got to go after ISIS. Let me ask you really quickly though, when we talk about no boots on the ground, we're talking about U.S. military personnel. However, can you foresee having government contractors or a mercenary army backed by the U.S. and other countries to do the job on the ground? No, but I see having uh, Sunni troops, such as the Free Syrian Army, being on the ground with our advice and with pinpoint airstrikes being quite successful in Syria as it has been in holding off ISIS in northern Iraq. All right, Senator, thank you so much for joining us today with your insights. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Uma.